Hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough. Last parts was sort of a disaster in my opinion. <laughs> but I wanted to upload it because there were a bunch of fun moments and I pride myself on honesty when it comes to gameplay skill and whatnot. So even though I didn't really make the progress that I wanted to make in the last part, I opted to upload it anyway. Now, what I'm thinking about doing with this level and what I actually will be doing with this level is uh, um, practicing it, like with save states, and that's what I'm going to be doing in this part. Like, I'm not going to, um, like, I'm going to replay this level later without save states, but I want to play this sucker in a more controlled fashion so I get a better quality practice per room. Like, dying on a room far into the level is just really, really annoying because you have to replay all this every time you make the silliest of mistake or some sort of trap gets you and it's it wears you down <laughs> and that's what basically had me stop the last part because I was feeling so burned out so right now I'm gonna pause press escape pick state number four save state yes I am there we go let's get out of here <laughs> so I'm gonna do that each and every room just for the sake of, you know, quality practice, because I'll actually be able to uh, focus on obstacles. Actually, maybe I should save state more than that. I should save state whenever I get to an awkward obstacle, like some obstacle that I might want to retry a couple times just to uh, get the feel of. Uh, that piranha plant over there that shoots fireballs, you probably want to get rid of it. <laughs> because <laughs> it's in a really strategic spot and it offsets the timing of all this stuff sometimes. So, yeah, it's pretty handy to get rid of that piranha plant. So, practice, practice, practice getting that shell to knock it for a loop. For this guy, you want him to be shooting his football off to the left while that piranha plant is going up off to the right because you gotta be able to get in here otherwise they'll turn around and start throwing fireballs in your I mean start throwing footballs in your way while the piranha plant is preventing you from moving forward it's a pain the same with this piranha plant to an extent and that you have to wait for its fireball to move so it's kinda like a reverse obstacle and yeah now for this wait for the portal booze and the piranha plant to be in the right spot and move on ahead as you can tell I've got the relative hang of uh, these these parts because I've played them so many times but that's that's the thing I, I need to be able to practice these rooms in order to actually have uh, consistency and that's what I'm doing here that's hence the whole honesty portion of this because uh, if I didn't do it this way I would only be able to like nudge myself forward through rooms like very very gradually you know because I keep uh, dying in later rooms and I have from you know later rooms from uh, new obstacles and whatnot and what that happen what happens is that I end up having to restart what I already did and then I, I kind of lose track of my practice of where I was in you know said spot that I died at you know it's kind of hard to keep track of so much in the level and whatnot so yeah as you can tell made it through this without uh, save states so far really I mean yeah I am save stating as a precautionary measure but what I mean is that I'm I'm doing it without without any ire because I am you know I'm I'm there focusing on the obstacles but when I got really burned out I started making mistakes even on uh, these rooms that I've already you know quote unquote mastered which is especially frustrating whoops <laughs> <laughs> that was my own fault because I had a little bit of, a little bit hasty there, but that's especially frustrating because you know you you you've already done an obstacle before and then to make a mistake on said obstacle again is sort of like a confidence killer and whoops I got a save state here and I also probably should focus on practicing these areas without like a cape or something like that because chances are most of the time I'm not going to have a cape anyway so yeah. <laughs> Now that fire flower can be a little bit dicey to get, but well, it's either a fire flower or a mushroom, depending on you know what power you have. But you know it was a fire flower that time, and if it is a fire flower, you gotta jump up to it, and that can be a little bit dicey. Now watch out for that spike. 
If it's a mushroom, you just hit the box and run over to the other side. Now, for this jump, you want to duck jump while it's moving over to the right side, and you'll be able to make this jump with ease. And with this, you want the spark to be moving down off to the left side to make that jump with ease. But you gotta get off the block quick enough, of course. This, this right here is something that I would like to practice here. It, it doesn't look like a, a dangerous jump. Oh, but it is. Here, I'll show you. See, your, your spin jump can reach those spikes up to the ceiling, but that's a pretty wide jump, and, well, ugh, no, that's what can very easily happen. So, that's what I would like to practice here. <laughs> so, yep, and there you go. See, I just took a hit from the spikes again, and it, it's just so, so tricky to make it past this jump without taking a hit, especially, well, when you're big, I should say. And can I go like back? Yeah, it's easier to go back because you're lower than it is going forward. I mean, yeah, I could like duck jump a little bit as well. That that might actually be more useful than trying to spin jump, despite the spin jump being more, ah, shoot, being more floaty. I'm not sure really. Like, whoops, like when you're small, um, this, this jump is pretty trivial for the most part. But, you know, it's kind of uncomfortable to do a duck jump on such a tight, tight quarters. Well, well ugh, shoot. And yeah, all these mistakes that you would see me, I mean, that you're seeing me do here, would set me back all the way to the beginning of the level. Well, unless, you know, I hit the, the spikes and I, you know, fall onto a safe platform. Dang it. <laughs> so yeah, if I'm small here, it's not really that big of a deal. I can just do a regular spin jump right across you know, without having to worry about jumping too high or anything like that. But when I'm big, I, I'd like to keep my power up if at all possible. But uh, that's but being big in this level isn't really the most ideal thing in a lot of cases because it's tight. Okay, I gotta practice that. Dang it! <laughs> See, that's just a consistency thing. It's not really sure how well I'll be able to do that. So yeah, poopers. Ah, See, even that, it's it's difficult to stop on a little on a little platform consistency, cause consistently as well, because oh jeez. See what I mean? It's just so so easy to mess up on this jump. It's a lot lot trickier than it looks. <laughs> See, I under jumped there because I was focused on the spikes and that caused me to jump into the laser. I'm better off over jumping and hitting the spikes, obviously, because what happens is um, I have a chance at landing on a platform, but okay, I think that's enough practice. <laughs> All right, for this Koopa here, you want to jump when it's about there, and there you go. Yeah, it, it, just when it turns around on the uh, uh, left side, basically, and for here, you can just do a regular spin jump, pretty simple. Oh yeah, I forgot about that spike, I'll just accept that hit. Uh, the same with this Koopa, is when it is just turning around on the left side, you want to jump towards it. Now, here is another obstacle I would like to practice, because I'm not really sure how to get past this sucker. It, it, it appears that, nope, you can't run off the edge. <clears throat> okay, it appears that you have to make some sort of jump across here. But when you get to this thwomp, oh, that's how it's done, I guess. You gotta duck jump off the last thwomp, because it seems like the, the last the last thwomp in this run here is is always going to hit you when you're big. Ah, shoot. <laughs> yeah, and that's something you'd like to avoid. And it also helps if you jump last second there um, as well, you know, on that last jump. Because there's far less room um, on each, I should say, a little bit less room on each. Oh, you can even do it as a with a regular spin jump as well. So I guess you don't have to duck jump there. The duck jumping would probably be a little bit more consistent. Okay, maybe I got the hang of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume I got the hang of it. I'm gonna, if I'm gonna probably do more practice off camera, but yeah, this is sort of like how I would practice a difficult level. Is yeah, how I would do this sort of dealio on a run here. There's two spikes that are gonna fall, and that's the end of the room. Now I'm going to pause and save states. There we go. Moving on. 
with the groove on, and I should actually uh, hurry up here a little bit because time is still kind of tight, and duck jump through here, same with that. It's much, much handier than, be than worrying about taking a hit. You're relatively safe here, so go under that one and spin jump off of this one if you have to. Uh, these right here, I'm betting you just want to be patient as to where their positionings are. Uh, these platforms here can sometimes be in rather bad spots and you sometimes have to jump over like that as far as I can tell. Yeah, and now from here we are going to see what else is there to come because I kind of forgot. This, I probably want to jump over everything. I could do that even with without a cape. Oh boy, this is... Those sort of water bubbles from uh, Super Mario Land 2 that you can swim in midair. Yeah! Um, only they're actually, you know, like regular water. Well, that wasn't that difficult, actually. Oh. This door I might want to practice. <laughs> so let's save states. Yes, yes, yes. And I probably want to do it. I probably want to focus more on the center one than the outside one. Like. Yeah, okay, yeah, That maybe that one's not all that difficult. Now we got another swimming segment. You probably want to follow the saw blades like that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Pretty simple. Oh, no, 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 no! I was caught on the edge. <laughs> and all this right here isn't all that difficult until you get to about here. And this is, again, something I want to practice. Yeah, I know this level relatively well, it's just that I want to get the hang of it. Now you want to swap over to this side because the... Ah, oh, shoot. I'll try it again. Because the they go in the opposite direction there. You just kind of want to, kind of want to figure eight around those uh, central blocks, so to speak. They just keep going in uh, opposite directions like that and whatnot, so yeah. So over here you want to go around this way. Over here you want to go off to... The left, like that, now you want to go to, I mean go off to the right like that and you want to go back over to the left, okay, there we go. I have nailed it, and I consider that good enough <laughs> for my practice. Now this room, get ready for doom, because <laughs> the doom just keeps going on, oh yeah, oops, and that mistake would have set me all the way back over to the start of the level. And that's something I don't want to, you know what, don't want to happen. You know, I wonder if I should, like, decape myself here. Because the cape is actually kind of messing with me on some of these jumps. Yeah, and I'll hang over here. Yep, we've got squishy one hit kill suckers around this area now. Hurry up over here because you want to offset the timing of the squishies. Because, yeah, it's not safe anywhere there. As I said, I know this level relatively well, it's just a matter of repracticing it. Oops, I forgot about that. <laughs> That's okay, because I've got the save states to practice. And I'm gonna take that hit right away. And fire flower, spin... <sighs> I'm just getting hasty now. Okay, pretend it's the first time you've reached this room. And want to get through it with ease. I suck. <laughs> yeah, this this level is really, really difficult. Okay, take the hits. Grab the fire flower, and I'll do the room like you want to practice it. There we go. Just gotta jump more in the center of the platform. Alright, so jump up here, get over here, get that twomp to move. Because you don't have much time to get out of the other piston's way. And sneak between those two. Wait it out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Wait. Wait some more. And go, 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 go. <laughs> oh, jeez. Ah, that piranha plant. That could be an issue. Maybe. If it's going to cause fireballs to be in my path. Alright, here we go. Final room. Like, quite literally, it spells final in the room. Yeah, you really have to go through all of this without save states normally. Uh, that That's a rather strategically placed uh, dry bones there. I'm gonna let it go. And, ee! Oh, I, why did I spin jump? If I would have duck jumped, it would have been fine there. Uh, this room I really don't think I need much practice on, uh, except maybe here. <laughs> uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that, 
and I'm gonna just practice practice this room right from the get go here. Just one just one practice run, just for realsies here. Like if I was really playing the level, I really wanted to be careful on it. So yeah, I would go up to here. I would careful. I press down. I'm gonna count that as pressing down. I swear. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna dodge that, and spin jump up here, and then you go in the door. Alright, here's Bowser! Gonna save states. Yep. Let's do it. It's not really Bowser, it's Mouser. Yeah, actually, Mouser replacement for Bowser. So it's a different Bowser fight than you what you would expect around here. And you gotta wait for the bombs to explode, just like Mouser. It's probably the easiest part of this entire level. Because you because you know, by this time, you've you've probably played Mario 2. You've been through a lot. You can handle Mouser. Come on now. <laughs> And yeah, you can tell when bombs are going to explode, just pay attention to the bombs. And as you can tell, I, since I've played through Mario 2 upteen times, I've, I've pretty much got the hang of the monster fight in a nutshell, you know, when it comes to um, offsetting bomb blast explosions and whatnot. And yeah, by the way, if you kick bombs around, they won't explode. Uh, so yeah, that's another thing that's... Uh, Actually, make pff, I'm done. <laughs> it makes this level even easier, actually, since you can kick bombs around, unlike Ma uh, Mario 2. Bowser is defeated! Again. <laughs> By gaining command of Bowser's starship and its immensely immense firepower, Mario was able to scatter the entire invasion fleet into the five corners of the Mushroom Kingdom. Press the X button. Okay. To prevent anyone from exploiting the second reality's power supply station again, Bowser Mario I mean Mario used Bowser's starship to warp to the second reality and disable the power switch, powering down all the gateways. Woohoo! Upon returning to the Mushroom Kingdom, Mario had the starship's jump engine disassembled. Finished with the task of completely cutting off the second reality, he decided to keep the rest of the ship intact. After all, he had immensely... immense firepower. <laughs> of course, Bowser doesn't quit. He'll undoubtedly be back. Again. But for now, the Mushroom Kingdom is safe and controls a powerful defensive weapon. Bowser will think twice, maybe thrice, before he hatches another scheme. Again. <laughs> I rather like that dialogue. <laughs> and we get the credits! Woo! But of course, there's a little bit more to this game. Because, um, as you know, there is the top secret area I still gotta show, which gives you a hint um, about the uh, crash landed castle, which is in the volcano. So, I've still got that to do. And why I saved that for last, you'll see why. Um,. But yeah, this is the end of Bowser's Starship, and as you can tell, it's a doozy of a level, and it will probably take me a while to do it without save states again, because I have done it without save states before, it's just gotta, gotta practice it again, <laughs> until I get that consistency back up to snuff. Um, I've also got to, you know, refigure out the best strategies on how to get through rooms consistently. Uh, the most ideal way to get through rooms probably are, um, probably to try and think of a way to, like, stay by an obstacle until you're able to pass by it, you know, carefully. And then, you know, just run through it when you're able to, but it's kind of hard to figure that out when there's the time limit and whatnot and yeah so I'm, I'm gonna continue practicing the uh, second half of this level off camera but anyway as I usually say the game was not made by me it was made by these people well mostly FPI <laughs> but uh, yeah there were some testers and there was some additional music and whatnot but mainly the level design was you know it was by FPI no, I didn't make the game, these awesome people did. I just made the walkthrough on it to help and entertain people, but the walkthrough is not over. Because there is still a bit more to do. And oh boy, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, if you didn't notice, you can, I uh, wrote in the first part's description where to get this game. You can get it off of FPI's website or uh, SuperMarioWorldCentral.net. And uh, 
Oh yeah, I gotta go through the enemies, of course. But the, the enemies, I mean, I, excuse me, the game uh, can be found at a couple of different locations. Of course, they're gonna have to patch it uh, to a clean Super Mario World ROM. I think it's like you need 1.0 version. All ROMs are, I mean, all ROM hacks are based off of and whatnot. And it's optimized for uh, Z SNES, but not Z SNES 1.41, I think it is. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't really work on other uh, emulators. Gotta use Z SNES and not the 1.41 version of it, otherwise, it won't quite work right. Uh, I know Z SNES is typically not the recommended um, emulator to use for things because of its inaccuracies, but since it was made for this emulator, it was like. It's like the game was modified and made, etc., etc., for the actual um, emulator itself, as if the emulator was a console, so to speak. You know, because you because you know games made for consoles are highly optimized for said console, which is why it's difficult to emulate games, you know, accurately uh, on a PC because PCs just don't have the same hardware as uh, uh, the console they were made on has, so they have to substitute it with. Uh, certain like workarounds I guess you could say but yeah if you're gonna play this play it on Z SNES I'm using uh, 1.51 I think it is um, actually I could check that now um, hold on a sec miscellaneous about uh, yeah Z SNES 1.51 right here so there we go Z SNES comes with absolutely no warranty blah blah blah, blah. yeah you know <laughs> there we go <laughs> just had to show that so yeah that's that's how I got this to work nice and consistently. So booyah for consistency. <laughs> My playing skill, however, could use some more work <laughs> to get consistent. I have seen people do it without save states, and I have done it before without save states. And you can check other people doing it without save states is what I'm saying at the moment. Like uh, um, Four Sword, Four I think his name is. Did it without save states, no commentary though. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's just a matter of uh, practicing the levels until I've mastered the, the invisible fish. Until I've in, uh, mastered them. So, yeah, there's some silliness in the uh, enemy list here, as you can tell. Like, said invisible fish. But, yeah, you, they even show a little bit of, uh, like, screen caps of said uh, special custom graphics and whatnot. So it's like a redux of the usual enemy um, enemy listing at the end credits that Super Mario World has, and yep, it's pretty awesome how this game was made. I have to say, overall, I mean, there is, as I said, a, you know, as I've explained a couple of times through it, there are a couple of duds of level designs in my opinion, but you know, it's just it's kind of the nature of. Um, nature of games in general, you're not going to really uh, click with all the level designs. Um, like, I'm, like, the difficulty of Bowser's Starship is too much for my comfort levels. <laughs> so I, I would probably modify that if I had any say in the matter. Um, you know, like, maybe, maybe move the midpoint a little bit further on. Or use that, or there's supposedly some patch thing that allows you to use two midpoints in one level. So maybe you have a second midpoint in the in this level. And now we're actually gonna see the second reality's enemies! Yay! Well, we already kinda knew these enemies. <laughs> um I'm guessing they're implying, I should say FPI is implying that the Sonic levels were a part of the second reality. As was the um uh, Bowser's starship level area part thing, you know, after I got past Bowser's castle. Uh, wait, what's Bowser's... No, yeah, Bowser's palace, not Bowser's castle. But, you know, it was based off of Bowser's castle. Oh, no, oh and its name is Bonsai Billy. That's what, it name is, what its name is. Mecha Mines. So that's the name of the fuzzy replacements. Uh, yeah. So now I'm finally learning the names! Kind of. <laughs> Well, I've seen him before, but you know, I forgot the names offhand. Uh, yeah, Bowser. We know Bowser. Who doesn't know Bowser by now? You're welcome. Oh yeah, we gotta find them all. Gotta find them all. Where's the title screen? 
Ah, oh, there we go. Now if we go back to here, we are going to see A2 on our save file. Um, this is something interesting. This game, if I'm not mistaken, has 117 exits. Well, they're not all programmed into this numerical value for your save file. So if you don't have 117, you're, you're going to see some sort of odd hexadecimal number like this. But once you reach 117, that's programmed into it, and you'll be able to see 117 on your save file. So yeah, in any case, I am going to end off the part here. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part. Wait a second. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I can't do the, ne the next part of Second Reality Project just yet, because the, the place that Crash Landed Castle has, well, it has some sort of in-jokes that talk about, or say that reference, a little game known as Chaos Complex. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this walkthrough on hold to play another walkthrough known as Chaos Complex. Chaos Complex is a junk hack. <laughs> Like, purposefully made to be a junk hack. It's, it's got a lot of jokes, it's got a lot of bad level design by design. It's, it's something uh, made to show people how not to make level design, basically. You know, how not to design levels. And it's, it's pretty fun to play through as a result of it being a, a, a like, satric... Uh, uh, satire game is <clears throat> is what I'm saying here. So, even though the level design of this won't be up to snuff of uh, the Second Reality Project Reloaded, it will most certainly be fun to play through. So, yeah, I'll see you when I play Chaos Complex. Ta -da -da!